What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Homie Hangout, where we help others move in excellence. And I hope everybody's weekend went well. Uh, I spent my Sunday evening, like over 3,000 other people, watching uh, Lefty Gunplay on Hoodstocks, right? And, and it's funny, I was going to do a reaction to it last night. I was going to record it last night. And I thought, man, let me kind of sleep on this uh, a little bit. And and then I had some appointments this morning. And, and obviously, a lot of folks have dropped reactions and there's probably going to be reactions to come for for days on end right and uh i i think my takes probably a little bit different than some you guys let me know in, in the comments if i succeed at that or not but uh let me say this first i hope it is not the end of hood stocks right i i really do um i i watch lucky's channel sometimes you know it kind of depends on who he's interviewing really uh but i think overall man it's it, Seems like a dude with a good heart. He's he's got his own demons, his own trauma, like all of us, you know. And and it is what it is. But it for those that don't know, I guess maybe just start this way because I'm not gonna show clips of it. Uh, but but for those that don't quite know how how do we get from the beginning when Lucky is celebrating uh, Lefty Gunplay, right? And and he's kind of holding his jewelry and and he's really giving a dude his flowers, you know, so to speak, to to calling him out and, and what's up, foolish run fade and, and kicking him out of the studio, right? So uh, the quick version is this, right? The interview started off really well. Uh, more viewers than than Hoodstocks has ever had, you know, during during a live interview. So it's kind of record breaking for them. It, it had the makings of a little bit of a more serious interview. You know, I, I feel like Lefty was presenting himself really well. Uh, you know, I don't like all of his antics or, or whatever, but viewing it just through the lens of a man, right? He he, uh, he was presenting himself pretty well, uh, interesting topics. And Lucky talked about how, you know, he, he's got an issue with drugs, right? And, and he has a history of that, which he's talked about before. And how, you know, he had partied the night before and wasn't really in his right mind in the morning. And and then, you know, obviously Lefty is like, I love the and this and that. And, and the conversation kind of gets a little weird. Um, shrooms wound up coming out and, and getting passed around on, on top of folks taking shots and so people are kind of feeling themselves and and i give lucky credit uh because he he was trying to get at lefty about the scante right and, and saying hey man that that stuff's gonna ruin your life you know and and he talks a lot about how it you know it ruined parts of his life lefty wasn't trying to hear it you know he's like man all, every, all the raps i wrote have been off scante and this and that and so it kind of was what it was um and and they take an intermission, they come back and all of a sudden they got no search on and, and they're sweating and stuff and they start taking phone calls. And Lefty winds up going off about his BM, right? And sees this and sees that and and but shouts out to her because I don't even like holding my kid for more than 10 minutes. And then he says, Man, you know, we have my baby in a G ride. That's how, you know, ghetto we are, hood or whatever. And Lucky seems to kind of seize on that. And and if you've watched him before. Uh, he, you know, he talks about being a parent and, and having a messed up childhood and, and, you know, providing for his, his family now and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, and it seems like he really wanted to seize on that part. Right. And, and Lefty wasn't really trying to hear it. And that's where the FU comes out. And it wasn't an aggressive FU at all. And Lefty didn't take it that way. Right. Even Lefty said, uh, Hey, I know, like we cool. I know you didn't mean nothing by it. But the image, right? The bloggers, the podcasters, people are going to take that clip and they're going to turn it into something that is not. So I just got to address it in the moment. Just, you know, but we're good. And and so I really feel like things moved on from there. But Lucky had been trying to make a point about kids, right? And about being a parent. And so he kept trying to get back there. And, you know, you get that tunnel vision. He's loaded at that point. Lefty's loaded. So he's trying to move on to anything, right? Man, let's talk about this. Let's talk about that. And, and Lucky is sounding kind of like a broken record, right? Because he has that tunnel vision. Well, I want to, I want to, and he never gets a chance to make his point, right? And and then things, you know, kind of snowball from there, right? Bozo comes in. Lefty's trying to use that as kind of like a, a distraction or let's move on. Oh, hey, man, there's Bozo. Let me go talk to Bozo. Sign out Bozo's new album and Lucky's just stuck, fool. He's not going to let it go. He wants to say what he wants to say. Lefty's not letting him. 
and and basically Lucky kind of let, lost control of his platform and reasserted himself aggressively. Uh, there's going to be lots of people talking about the substance use and, and who's right and who's wrong and the big homie versus the little homie and, and you know, the media training and, you know, all this different stuff. So I'll leave that stuff to them, right? Uh, what I want to say is this is why brown folks from California have such a hard time making it, right? So with, with hood stocks, they have sponsors, you know, the, the, the weed companies, I think a clothing company, a lawyer, whatever, and, and shouts out to them. I'm, I'm sure they're good sponsors, right? They're not going to be probably dissuaded or, or turned off by what happened on the podcast, right? Um, that, that exchange, all the stuff that happened, all the sex play, the, the drugs, the threats, the, the everything, um, that's not going to hurt their brand, right? With, with their consumers. So they're not going to trip. But let's be real. Pepsi would not sponsor a podcast like that. Would would not sponsor an episode like that, right? Amazon and and you know Gucci or or whatever, right? Just mainstream bands or mainstream uh, 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 groups, uh, companies, brands, that kind of stuff. They're not gonna want their name attached to that. Now I don't know Lucky's goal with with Hoodstocks. Uh, it seems that he wants to grow the platform, right? It, it's He's very clear. He has a very good job that, that he works through the week. And, and so I'm sure he's not hurting for money. He pays his bills. He lives his life. But he's invested. You can tell that he's invested some into hood stocks, right? And he doesn't just have dues for the neighborhood over there. He's he's trying to broaden the audience or broaden the, the guests that he has on there. And, and he has his own style, of course. Uh, but it would seem that he kind of would like it to grow uh, as long as he could stay true to, to his values and whatnot, which I get that. And and I think it's possible, uh, but not with behavior like that. Right. Other brands, other advertisers are going to see that and be like, nah, bro, I'm good. And when it comes to lefty, like, you know, he talked about oh, I, I do scanty. Who cares? I got a million dollars. Right. I don't know if he does or he doesn't. I don't think it really matters. Um, Clearly, there's been a push put behind him, right? And the the recipe was there for him to make it big. Not just big in California, not just big in Southern California, not just big in the Southwest, but potentially big, like mainstream big time. And his behavior is kind of shooting himself in the foot, right? And And episodes like that are not doing him any favors, you know? And that's the unfortunate part, right? Is if all you want to be is regional, if if you just want to make music for for your hood, then cool, do that, right? Like there's nothing wrong with it. If if you just want to have a podcast for for your section, however you define that, then then that's cool, do that, you know. And and there's nothing wrong with it, right? But I know that there are entertainers and podcasters and rappers and artists in California that are Rasa that want to go bigger, right? Want to put on for their people on a bigger stage. And episodes like last night are not helping anybody. You know, that's what makes other folks, the people really in positions of power and influence, turn around and be like, I'm not messing with that dude, right? No, I'm Man, Lefty would be great for this movie role, but I'm not gonna bring that dude on set with it all that extra, right? I'll I'll get some dude from Texas or I'll get some dude from New York and we'll just teach them how to sound like they're from California and put them in a movie, right? It's that I'm not inviting this guy on my show. No, not if he's gonna be like this. And you know, this is gonna get a lot of buzz in the California prison genre. Uh I doubt. Channels like Blood on a Razor Wire or 23 and 1 or 1090 Jake or or whatever. You know, and I'm just naming some some kind of bigger channels that have similar types of content but aren't based in California. I doubt they're gonna pick up on a story. They probably don't care. They'll see little clips of it and they'll laugh and they'll be like, Dennis Fool from California are off the hook. 
And locally within California, there's going to be people like, oh, man, you know, passionate about one side or the other or, or use it as a way to divide north and south. Right? Oh, look at the south side being this way. Or, or it's uh, that's why we're, you know, we're we're keeping it solid or whatever the different little bullshit ass narratives are that, that come out from this. But it's hurting the collective. You're hurting the brand of Raza in California. It's you may be satisfying your own folks, right? Um, like, oh, that's right, that fool's crazy, man. You never know what he's gonna do. That's right. And, and keep it G, homie. Just don't change for nobody. Be yourself. That's horrible advice, man. If you're really trying to make it. Now that doesn't mean you you completely become some fake, you know, person or or whatever. But there's balance there. And there doesn't seem to be very much balance in the entertainment industry when it comes to Rasa right now. And that's why folks aren't making it. It's not lack of talent. You know, it's not lack of resources. It's not lack of support. It's recognizing that the world is bigger than your neighborhood. Uh, the market is bigger than your backyard, right? It's bigger than your half of the state or, or even the whole state. And this is why even podcasts that are based outside of California, that are not run by Rasa from California, hesitate to have people from California on their channels, on their shows, because always something comes with it. Their comments get filled with a bunch of people that claim something else, talking about how to uh, F them, they're the ops, this and that. These channels based in New York and based in Atlanta and based in Virginia and based in Chicago, they don't want to hear all that shit, right? The little hood ones, you know, that's fine. It, it's engagement, right? And and so you got 20, 50, 100,000 subscribers, then, then yeah, that works, right? But you got a million subscribers, you got a couple million subscribers, you don't want your comment section filled with that shit, right? But that's what comes with anybody from California. And that's why doors keep getting closed for people from California. And when there is an artist or there is an opportunity or there is a window, it's this crabs in a bucket syndrome, you know, of, of can't get out of each other's way. And I'm not saying again, like I said in a, in a video last week, I'm not suggesting everybody needs to get along, right? Uh, everybody needs to be on the same team. Everybody needs to work with each other or any of that shit, right? But when you get an opportunity, like view your people maybe as bigger than your own backyard, you know, because some of these folks, man, you have a chance to do something. You have a chance to go somewhere. That's dope. You get a million dollars, right? You're not going to get five acting like this. You're not going to get 10, 20 acting like this, you know, and. And if you got the talent to get you there, don't let your behavior and your antics and the bullshit throw you off. So I don't know, man, hopefully that makes sense. But I think it was just a bad look for California. You know, I don't think between them, it was really that big of a deal. I am guessing Lucky's going to come out and be like, hey, you know what? You know, players fuck up, man. And, and you know, my bad. You know, I just keep it raw and got a little carried away. And, and you know, so I expect that's going to be kind of, you know, resolved, squashed. Um, in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't a big deal. Personally, like all that kind of sex playing and clowning and, and all that is outside of how I communicate with, with my homeboys and my friends, but to each their own, right? Uh, it, it's just unfortunate that it was on camera because there was a lot of people watching. That was an opportunity for Hoodstocks. That was an opportunity for, for Lefty, right? And and in turn, in some sense, it's also an opportunity for California, for Raza in California, right? And and it just it's it's unfortunate how it played out, man. So, anyways, help others move with excellence. That's what homies do. Help yourself at the same time because you're worth it. Help your community because they need you. Let me know in the comments, man. What do you guys think? Right? Is am I overreacting? Am I am I you know putting too much on it or am I missing something? You know, let me know. All right, you guys, take care.